Joel with Joel Creates, and this is a hot glue gun. Why would I build a gun that fires hot glue? A YouTuber by the name of Michael Reeves recently posted a video where he built a hot glue gun as well. Here's what he had to say about the project. Ding, 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 it's the discarded afterbirth of a shitty idea. Oopsie doopsie, sometimes it's not the idea that's crap, it's just your execution. Here are my balls. I made a small mold out of aluminum to cast the balls in. Each one of these is a hot glue ball with some kind of metal in the center and then coated with epoxy. Half of these balls were made with glow-in-the-dark hot glue and half of them were made with regular hot glue. And in the center of each, I cast a small piece of metal, whether it's a BB, a washer, or a coiled piece of heating wire. You might be wondering at this point why I went through all the trouble of making hot glue balls. Well, as has already been pointed out by Mr. Reeves, hot glue is very viscous and thick. Because of those reasons, it doesn't flow very easily, even under high pressure. Even though hot glue is viscous and thick when it's hot, when hot glue isn't hot, it's not viscous and thick. In fact, it can be pretty smooth and slippery. A piece of hot glue at room temperature would be quite easy to fire out of something. If you could create a hot glue projectile that had a hot center, but a room temperature exterior, you could potentially fire that projectile and have it burst on impact, releasing the hot glue. This is the concept that I tried to bring to life with my design. The main challenge with this idea is finding a way to heat hot glue from the inside out. This is where induction heating comes in. Induction heating is the ability to heat certain metals with a magnetic field without having to actually even touch them. Induction heating will only work on certain types of metals. You could stick a piece of steel into a coil and watch it glow red hot, and then you could stick a piece of hot glue into that same coil and nothing would happen. You may have figured out at this point why I put a piece of metal in the center of every hot glue ball. It's so that I could heat it from the inside out. The piece of metal is heated by induction, and then it passes that energy slowly from the center towards the edges of the ball. The trick is to cook it for just the right amount of time so that the exterior doesn't become too soft or sticky, but the interior becomes hot enough that it will explode and release its hot glue on impact. I started with a basic paintball gun. I modified the loading area to fit the coil. I found a $20 induction coil circuit on Amazon. I mounted the induction coil to the loading area of the gun. The induction coil is powered by a 12 volt relay circuit on a timer. This allows me to program the coil kind of like a microwave. I attached a cooling fan as well. The induction coil itself tends to heat up a little bit from the amount of current passing through it. So the fan helps to keep the coil cool as well as the exterior of the ball. The whole thing is powered by six 18650 lithium cells. 18650 lithium cells each run at about 4.2 volts when fully charged. I have two parallel sets of three cells run in series. This gives us a maximum voltage of about 12.6 volts, perfect for our application. I also have a voltmeter added on the side just to track the battery voltages. This is a pump action paintball gun, meaning that it has a handle that you have to pump every time that you want to fire it. But the compressed air that shoots the projectile comes from a CO2 cartridge in the handle. I removed the pump handle and replaced it with the two battery cases. Building the gun itself only took me about half a day, but refining the balls themselves was an incredibly repetitious and arduous process. I initially wanted the balls to be made of only hot glue and the heating element, but I soon found that it was incredibly difficult to evenly heat the inside of the ball without the hot glue spilling out of the edges. And as soon as it spilled out of the edges, then it became impossible to fire it without gumming up the entire assembly. The reason I chose epoxy is because it is strong and slightly brittle once it's dry. I wanted something that would hold all the glue in, have some heat resistance, and then be able to break easily on impact. One of the problems that I've had is with the balls striking a target and bouncing off. This may be due to some sort of a non-Newtonian reaction. The high speed and intensity of the impact may temporarily cause the hot glue to shift from being a liquid to behaving more like a solid. Many of my test shots would bounce off their target and then land and stick to something else. This is where I got the idea to attach several blades to the front of the gun. These blades were meant to help shred the glue ball after it leaves the gun. This is to help increase the surface area of the projectile and help it spread out somewhat like a shotgun. After many revisions, I was finally able to get this thing to work. We'll throw some of these against a piece of granite it and we'll see what sticks. So we'll call it the... Whoa! My aim was way off with that one. It's definitely nice and melty. X gon' glue it to you! Just not sticking where it should. Damn right, and I glue it again! Prepare to be laminated.
Mm -hmm. Glue or glue not, there is no try. By the way, just for reference, here's one of my glue balls versus a paintball. Yeah, this one didn't have enough heat in it. Didn't really get hot enough. This thing looks absolutely stupidly dangerous, especially with the blades on front. It just looks like a lie of freaking Billy. I just pointed that at my head, I'm an idiot. All right, maybe it's not the most efficient design, but it's a gun that fires hot glue. At the very least, we have a solid proof of concept with this. The thing kind of works. It shoots hot glue projectiles, and sometimes they even stick to their target. These things are coming out of here at probably 250 feet per second. I don't exactly know how far this will shoot because I don't want my neighbors to call the cops on me when I walk outside with this. Hasta la vista, baby. You guys keep pumping them out one after the other. Shitty ideas in my goddamn comment section. You should make a hot glue gun that actually shoots hot glue. Oh, ding, ding, ding. It sucks ass. It doesn't shoot. I like poking fun at Michael Reeves. People who have become popular from their creative endeavors are easy targets because everyone sees them. The truth is, anyone who's ever worked in any kind of an engineering field can tell you that just because a problem can be solved, that doesn't mean it should be solved. Michael was able to take an idea and turn it into a funny video, and that's something that's admirable. But I just couldn't let the idea go. I think it's because hot glue for so many people is the gateway into do-it-yourself projects. Not only that, but building things that fire other things is just something that so many creators love to engage in. Firing hot glue, it's the embodiment of the maker's spirit. And that's why I just had to figure out a way to do this, even though it was a crap load of effort. So Michael, if you're watching this, hey, dude, look, I get it. I'm not trying to be a dick. You made a funny video. You deprecated your audience. You deprecated yourself. Everyone gets off on a little self and subscriber deprecation now and then, or all the time, in every video, constantly. See, I can do it too. I hope you enjoyed the video and my music and the glue gun and me riding on Michael's coattails and consider subscribing. I'll catch you next time. If you wanna know how I got that opening shot of the gun, it was by using my CNC machine as a time-lapse slider. I've got a stepper motor over there that rotated the camera. Here's a time-lapse of that time-lapse. It's amazing the things you can do with a three-axis machine like a CNC machine or a 3D printer. Who knows, maybe I'll program it next time to feed me tomatoes or something like that.